Hello, what's going on guys? Brad coming to you from the apartment. First day off in a very long time. And I know this is majority a tobacco review site, but I wanted to come at you with something different. And one of those different things is I work at a shop. I've recently been handed the knife department. I think I may have mentioned that in another video. And so I wanted to go over some of the things that I really, really like and some of the things that um, I'm not as excited about, but they're still phenomenal products. Three of those products I own. A lot of the others, well, you could say that uh, I just don't have money for them all, but a few things I've gotten from the distributors and retailers for free. So I wanted to go over that. First, an old standard in anybody's collection, the Victorinox, the Swiss Army Knives. Wenger, uh, Wenger also makes um, the Swiss Ar a Swiss Army Knife that's licensed as a Swiss Army Knife. Um, these are the original Officer Suisse, or Official Swiss, as I would pronounce it in some kind of botched German, probably more French. Officer Schweiz, Suisse, so I guess but Swiss made stainless. Um, I really like the Swiss Army. This is the Ranger. I really like Swiss Army because they're very functional tools. There's a bunch of different configurations for each sort of size. I would call this into the mid to fat range, more the mid, um, the big end of mid. You have things that are even bigger, like the Swiss Champ and the XVLT and all these other Swiss that are just massive bricks. Completely, in my mind, and absolutely asinine. Um, you know, the Swiss Army that I carry on my keychain is this little classic blue. You know, it's got two blades, I think. No, it's got a blade, it's got a file, and it's got scissors on the back. I mean, it's incredibly small, but that'll take care of 99% of the jobs you have. Um, something like this guy, and a lot of the other ones, in my mind, have unnecessary tools. But then again, these are multi-tools. This is the original multi-tool. So, you know, having a saw, I'm not really sure what you're going to use that saw for, but, you know, having a little saw, a couple different files, um, Bottle openers, can openers, hooks, awls, um, you know, all kinds of things. A, a, screw, uh, a corkscrew. All these things can be used in multiple ways. Um, for example, this guy. How many uses do you think you could have for that? Okay. Well, for one, I know that I could probably pry things with the, with the bottle opener portion. That would be good for a screwdriver. That little piece in there, I might be able to use in conjunction with another tool for crimping. Maybe if I needed to, like, you know, whatever I might need that little hook in there for. Um, the can opener is another one of those tools that just has so many functions. Um, if I need to puncture tin... I need to open a can, um, actually cut open a can. Uh, there's a little mini screwdriver on the top. I could also use that as a prying tool. There's lots of different things. You know, I could sharpen that to do something different. I can sharpen this face up here for something different. You know, they're designed to be multifunction. Your imagination is your only limitation. Uh, good warranties on these products. Sharpenings are available for them, but definitely worth having in a, in a kit or in your car or anywhere you want. Number two, and I don't have one around me, so unfortunately I can't show you, but K-Bar. Um, oh wait, wait a minute before I go any further. Let me see. Aha, I knew I had it. Here we go. K-Bar, specifically speaking... these here. This is the Becker Knife and Tool, B-K-N-T. Uh, Ethan Becker uh, is a knife designer and bush craftsman outdoor expert. You know, if you need knives, you can certainly 
do lots of cool stuff with it. That's nothing I need to could be concerned with right now. Um, but in particular, my favorites, okay? The 15, we have the 15, the 16, and the 17, okay? We've got the, set, starting from the top on this side, the 7, let's see, yeah, 7, 9, 10, 11, 13 CP, which is um, kind of like the 14, but a different handle shape, and then you have the 24, which is um, pretty much the same thing as the 14. Both of these are the S are the SA designed K bars. Um, they're the same thing, just one's coated, one's uncoated. And um, I tell you what, they're absolutely phenomenal. You can buy different cases for them. They make uh, scales for the BK7 and the BK um, for the 7, the 9, and the 10. They make supplemental scales for. You can get custom Kydex sheets on them. 1095 Crovan steel. So we're talking pretty amazing knives. And not to mention, built in only in New York. Though they are, you know, oh, and then here we go. Here's a few others uh, by Becker. Uh, we've got at the top here the, B, the Companion, also known as the BK2. There's also the BK22, which is heavy-duty version. It's pretty much the same thing as the BK7, just shorter and fat as hell steel. Uh, we're talking this thing could peel back the steel on a VW bus and then go through a German helmet and then club down a tree. Uh, maybe not too big, but you can certainly use that as, I call it like a mini camp axe um, because it's just so freaking awesome. Wicked good. That actually comes with a hard Kydex sheath with a Cordura belt loop that hangs off your belt. So, tons of good uses. You have the BK3, which is the tack tool. Um, the BK4, which is the mat, the mag jacks, which is amazing. You have the Magnum Camp, the BK5, which is like a skinning all-purpose tool. But, you know, K-Bar, built in only in New York, uh, originally from Pennsylvania, and many, many, many years ago, moved to New York. Uh, started making their K-Bar model. People said, oh, the K-Bar company, right? So they changed their name because they were producing the K-Bar, which was their version of a Bowie knife, if you will, or Bowie knife, depending on what part of the country you're from and how you want to pronounce it. So K-Bar, really nice. BK and T, Becker Knife and Tool, line by K-Bar. Brilliant, worth the price, hands down. Moving on, okay? Anybody can recognize that hole there, and you might not recognize this knife at first, but this is the Spider Co. Um, Tenacious. I love Spider Co. I think they're really doing some awesome things. Their bird knives are out of this world great. They have some of the best steel for the value. Uh, this is 8CR 13MOV steel, so what that means, it's a molybdenum chromium, I believe, carbon steel, 0.8% carbon, so it is um, prone to staining, because any carbon steel really is, but they're just coming out now with their new H1 series of blades. The H1 is their saltwater series. Um, it is a carbon steel that has a 0.1% nitrogen process or something like that, whereby Introducing certain element, uh, certain gases to it, um, they're claiming that it's salt proof with carbon steel. Um, and they're designed for any application. There's a ton of things. The Tenacious is in their value line. You have also the paramilitary too, the military. You've got all the different multi-tools and things that they produce. But once again, phenomenal company. And the U.S. versus China versus Japan, don't worry about it. Every knife that they get uh, gets QC'd in their U.S. facility. So you're not relying on some guy that makes 10 cents an hour to do what should be done in the U.S. anyway. Um, real nice opening on this knife and with most of their knives. Uh, takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you get the knack, you know, really can't complain. This is the Tenacious one of my favorites. Hovering, you can find them online any as low as like $42. Uh, 
but the retail really should be at 64 between 64 and 69 dollars um, a lot of people are gouging start to expect to see prices uh, get more laterally the same I guess around 2016 they're going to start doing a minimum advertised pricing which is called map so expect to see that but the MSRP if you find these knives at the MSRP yeah you can save a couple bucks by finding somebody who's gouging um, I know my pro deal that I can get my employees on for these knives is almost the same as some of the lowest online prices for some of these knives and it's pissing me off a little bit so support local guys that are carrying this stuff you might spend a little more but it's worth it screw those online freaking retailers cutting my freaking business jerks but yeah spider coat awesome uh, moving up the line, I don't have any in front of me, but Helle, H-E-L-L-E -L -L -E from Norway. Wicked good knives. You have the Viking, which is an all-carbon. You've got the Utvair, which is a... They're all fixed blades, but the Utvair, the Doka, the, the Doka is a folding format, but all their knives have what they call a triple laminated steel. So inside of this softer spring-like material, spring steel-like material, you have hard carbon steel, very similar to how the Japanese do sort of um, some of their higher end kitchen knives and samurai swords were built. The hard carbon steel gives you wicked good edge retention and then you've got the softer steel around it which gives you a little bit of spring like quality. It also prevents rusting. Um, kind of brings the best of two worlds together but wicked good stuff. Uh, Hella is at the top of their game and then for boutique and mind you I'm going up in price in a lot of this. Oh, I forgot to mention Kershaw. Um, Kershaw is amazing. Uh, some of their knives are a little bit overpriced, but you can't go wrong with Kershaw. I'm getting the new uh, blades that have the dual blade, where they braise in two different they braise two different blade materials together, and it's got this cool wavy line and whatever. I'm getting them in. We're gonna we're gonna run them through their paces and see what they're actually worth if they're worth their weight in salt, uh, but we'll find out. Moving up, though, to my favorite company by far for the boutique. These guys are by, by Arno Bernard, and you can tell that I use the living daylights out of this knife. It's dirty. It's got sharpening marks. It's got just about everything you could ever hope to want out of a knife. And... The steels are awesome, okay, wicked, wicked good edge retention. Um, the handles, this is a giraffe bone handle, it's absolutely beautiful, you really can't see it, but it's got this really nice reddish orange to it. Uh, they make everything from warthog ivory to crocodile to mammoth, mol to mammoth molar. Um, go on their website, look at the beautiful things that they produce. Expensive. That's the only thing that turns a lot of people off from them is they are expensive knives. But Arno Sr. and his sons and the family, they do an amazing job with their knives. I couldn't be happier with a boutique knife. Uh, they range in price between, I want to say retail, somewhere between two and six hundred. Um, depending on the model, depending on the material and the handle. Uh, but you know, overall, really good stuff. You just have to hunt and peck for certain things. I know, like, giraffe bone, for me, when I get them in, they sell. They're out the door because uh, they're absolutely gorgeous. The mammoth molar is phenomenally good. They make an abalone shell handle that is just to die for. I get people that ask for it all the time. They're just hard for me to sell because they tend to be pricey and most people gravitate towards the bone uh, materials or the crocodile handle materials, at least in my area. Um, that could change though. Who knows? So, really good stuff. Check them out. I work at Kenco in Kingston, New York. That's K-E-N-C-O. You can look us up online and give me a call and if you need a knife or anything in particular, you know, Shout me out in the PM, you know, in the box below. Um, or you can call me up at Kenko. I'm there. 
most days, depending on my schedule, or uh, just ask to have a message taken, and I'll pop it in my mailbox, and I'll get back to you. So thanks so much, and I don't really want to plug my business because this is more like a cool review channel, but you know what? If I can help you out, let's see what we can do. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.